So welcome to this module on basic step-by-step -step simulation of controllers and what we're going to look at now is how we can explore the controllers that we have synthesized. So we have already uh, used this specification of the traffic light, uh, I think this was in um, one or, or two and we already did this synthesize a concrete controller and then we have this kind of transition system here. What happens when controllers or when specifications get larger is that also controllers get larger so um, maybe this one here if we want to synthesize a concrete controller um, it gets a bit more complicated to follow the the behavior that is synthesized in this controller and um, easily the specifications that we're dealing with they, they can have thousands of states so then even printing the transition system will no longer work. So in that case what we can do is we can synthesize a symbolic controller uh, and that is also how we execute the controllers in, in most of the cases when we run them on robots or when we run them in our own programs and the symbolic controller we can simply say uh, Spectra synthesize a static symbolic controller we will have a look what the just-in-time uh, symbolic controller does later but right now what we need to do is synthesize static symbolic controllers so we can synthesize a static symbolic controller uh, we will see that it says controller is saved to disk it's quite quick if we refresh the project we see that there are um, three files in the out folder and this is a representation of the symbolic controller there's really it's a it's an internal BDD representation so there's not really much that we can do with this it's uh, some numbers and nodes of the internal representation so there's not really any way for us to inspect this by looking at the the transition system because the transition system is a formula represented as a BDD so what we need to do is uh, we, we we kind of want to still explore this controller because we want to see whether it makes sense or we want to see what happens when the environment gives certain inputs. So what we can do is there is an add-on in Spectra which is the rich controller walker and we can decide to walk this controller as the environment player. So here the environment is uh, controlling whether cars are on road A or B. So if we want to walk this as the environment player, in this dialog what we see is we have some options to filter the states that we see. We will look at that later. And then the main things that we can do is we can select the next state. So the environment starts with providing some input. So here we only have one option and that is because there is um, an assumption that initially we have car A equals true and not car B. So of course then the environment is restricted to that initial assumption. Uh, so now let's select this state. Now let's assume that no further cars are coming. So we want to see what happens when no further cars are coming. So we can just double click again here on the false states a bit and we see that there is always a system response because that's what the controller generates and the controller keeps the lights um, keeps the lights both off. So let's give a few more uh, no cars coming and, and we see here that always the controller responds with keeping the lights off that's reasonable right so now let's see what happens if we have cars coming so now let's choose this one and we see immediately after having a uh, both cars on both streets we see that the traffic light on street A is green and the one on B is false so there is a guarantee of course here that they will never be true together so that makes a lot of sense and now let's see what happens if cars are coming again um, now we see both are off and then the green one uh, on on street B the traffic light on street B turns green so it will basically do a round robin and then make sure we always eventually have the lights uh, yeah, both green lights on A and B. So the default behavior is that we are keeping a log, so the log, um, this 
checkbox here says generate a lock this is turned on by default and this means that the states that we saw here they are saved into a file so we can later review the lock uh, we can now maybe close here and if we refresh then we see that in the file system it actually created this lock here which is the states that the um, that our that we basically walked through here the states are combined they're always the environment variables then the system variables so we could start the controller walker again and then load that file so let's walk again uh, it doesn't really matter for loading logs as who we are walking the controller uh, we just select the log and then um, we can either always click here the next state but now it's a combined state because there's no for log uh, we are not separating between system and environment uh, also by clicking on next state here we would uh, walk through the next states until we are uh, reaching the end of the log so this is how we can also replay logs um, if we say reset then uh, we reset the log and we also reset the symbolic controller and we can start again playing the um, playing the controller so let's stop this now and, and now what we can also do is we can not only walk as the environment player where we provide the inputs we could also walk as the system player or as both players now let's walk maybe as both players again the initial state is fixed by uh, some assumption then <clears throat> next we can select some states um, and then we see suddenly that uh, in some cases the system actually has multiple options so here the system could turn on the a green light or or not and these multiple options this actually um, is the case because we have by default a symbolic controller that is not deterministic so usually a controller should be deterministic so if the environment gives us one possible input which it always does then we respond with a single possible output but then playing as the system would not be um, so interesting because we could basically just choose a single option but let's um, maybe see where we can turn on this determinization so it is actually more um, more efficient to synthesize a non-deterministic controller that is then uh, determinized at runtime or, or simply by picking any possible state so any possible system response that the controller allows is guaranteed to satisfy the specification but if we say determinize the controller, so if we go to the preferences of spectra and then say determinize the static symbolic controller, it would make sure that we only get a single a single system output for every uh, environment state. So let's now synthesize the controller again. So then we can now again walk as both players and now whenever we are the system player we should only get a single option so we, again the environment is not really restricted we it could provide cars either no cars or it can provide cars on both sides and now the system will always respond with a single uh, option if we <clears throat> maybe want to um, filter the states so here we we don't have many possibilities but you can imagine that if we increase the number of variables then this will quickly blow up so what we can do is we can either choose a variable and filter by the by setting this variable to a specific value so let's say we want to set variable car b to false uh, and we simply add this filter then it would filter here only the states where car b is false now if we want to do the same thing for car a false then we would only get these states shown these filters they only apply to the player who owns the variables of course so basically now we are as the system player and now these filters they would have no effect because we are now entering different kinds of variables but as soon as we are the environment player again it would filter again based on this we can remove filters uh, like that or clear 
Um, then we can also do some more advanced filters. So we could, for example, uh, say that we want to filter where we have car A or car B. So here the syntax that we can use is exactly the same syntax we use in spectra specifications. So we can, yeah, use this or, or we can use an uh, implies and then we apply and then we always get the, the different filters, uh, the different options filtered. So yeah, this way we would have at least one car if we put the or, then apply that filter. Um, you can write anything you can you can write almost everything that you can write in spectra so you could even use predicates here or, or other language features you can also mix the variables but uh, there is some restriction here because um, let's say we want to say something where car a uh, implies uh, green a and we use that as a filter so this doesn't really make sense in the controller walker because what happens is that the environment inputs and the system outputs they will always be matched against this filter but here uh, car a implies green b if uh, sorry car a implies green a if we only have the variable car a then any assignment is possible for that for that variable uh, there is b uh, car green a is basically a don't care so here the filter on the environment variables only will not have an effect um, and then similarly on the system side it's basically here our choices will not restrict car A so again also on the system side this doesn't really have an effect might be a difference if we have an end here uh, but basically for these filters you should not really mix the the different environment and system variables because these filters they always apply to the choices here only and not to the states that we are generating. Um, if you want to be a bit more um, yeah if you want to do, do something on the states then this will be the breakpoints but that's another another session. Okay then one more thing is if we have a more complex specification for example this one here I say it's more complex because we have the response pattern actually instantiated three times <coughs> and we have um, past LTL operators so if we now synthesize that the way that these features here are internally handled in spectra is by adding auxiliary variables so these will also show up in the controller walker because they might be of interest for the debugging. So let's have a look at playing this as both players. Now again the inputs that's the same but then we see suddenly that we have tons of uh, auxiliary variables. The names they they relate to the features so for example the re three response patterns they are encoded in, in these variables and usually this is a bit if we really want to debug what's going on um, then maybe we are interested in these variables but if we're not interested in these variables we can simply uh, disable them from being shown and yeah then it would show us the system variables only the system variables which we really enabled so this makes it a little bit easier uh, to choose in the log they would still all appear um, so that we can replay the log uh, completely and you can of course also remove some of the environment variables but then um, yeah you still have uh, th these are still separate states so you see that the the values are the same now you're just not seeing that they are different states but they are different because we have uh, here I guess where car A that is not shown is false and here where car b that is not shown is false because for the execution of the controller we always need the complete assignments so uh, it's probably not a good idea to hide environment variables because yeah we always would need to see all of them we can hide system variables because for system variables uh, we might even just have deterministic 
uh, choices. So usually just a single option, and then maybe we are only interested whether green B is is true. So we only want to see green B. Uh, that's usually a good idea then. Okay, and now the <clears throat> for this module would be to synthesize a controller from the specification uh, grid L3 less spectra, and then explore both players. So explore the specification as both players, and you should not use the determinization because if you turn off determinizing the controller, you usually get more uh, choices as the system, which makes some sense when you just want to explore the specification. So the specification is this one, which is which was used in module L3, but I have deleted some of the assumptions and guarantees um, to make it a bit more, more interesting to explore. It's basically the movement of a robot on a grid. Um, and here the size of the grid, we yeah, have restricted it to five to make it a little bit more um, yeah, easier to, to browse.